Hey guys, so today I've got nine cool houseplant hacks that actually work to make your houseplants happy. So there are lots of blog posts and a few YouTube videos out there that have these kind of outlandish houseplant hacks, such as putting ice cubes on the top of your plant soil and let it melt into the soil. I'm not really sure why you'd do that. So I've got nine houseplant hacks that actually work. So let's begin. So hack number one is to reuse your cooking water that you've been using to cook your vegetables. The water that you use to cook your vegetables in a saucepan is full of nutrients so it can be used to water your houseplants. So instead of discarding it down the drain then why not use it as a fertilizer for your houseplants? The good thing about this of course is that it's not a strong fertilizer so there's no risk of over fertilizing your houseplants when you use the water from your vegetables to water your houseplants. Just don't forget to let the water cool down thoroughly before watering your houseplants and if you do use salt to cook your vegetables and I wouldn't use that to water them either because plants don't really like a uh, salt build up in their soil so I wouldn't use it. If you regularly eat boiled eggs then you can use the water that you've used to boil those eggs it'll be rich in calcium so you can use that for your house plants you can also use the water from when you make pasta and rice, that would be also good for your houseplants. If you regularly drink coffee throughout the day, then instead of throwing away your coffee grounds, you can use them, add them to the soil of your houseplants. And that's my tip number two. Adding the used coffee grounds to your plant soil will be beneficial to the soil and it will also improve the health of your plants. Coffee grounds will add nitrogen to the plant's soil, boosting the plant's growth. It will also increase the drainage, aeration and so moisture retention of the plant soil. So I've got some used coffee grounds right here and what I like to do is to grab my soil box, the box that I keep my soil for my house plants which is in here and what I like to do is just take my cooled used coffee brown grounds and just add them to my soil like so And then I give it a little mix inside. I'll use my spoon to do that actually. So really good at adding just a little boost of nitrogen in the soil. You're not wasting your coffee grounds as well. You're putting them to good use and it'll just work to increase the drainage of this soil that you're using for house plants, which is always a good idea. Tip number three is to use a plastic bottle such as this. This is a Coke bottle, a used one and using that to help water your plants while you're away on holiday. So before you go away on holiday, what you wanna do is you wanna take your plastic bottle. If there's a plant that is particularly sensitive to drying out, then this is a good tip for that plant. So you wanna take your bottle, make sure it's got a lid, and then take something uh, that you can pierce the bottle with. You just wanna pierce the top to get a hole in there. So I'm just gonna try and use this uh, corkscrew here. I'm just going to pierce the top as best as I can. Hopefully this works. So you just want a little hole in there just to allow some water to trickle out. There you go. So hopefully you can see that. So I've just pierced a hole in the lid, the cap of this bottle, used Coke bottle. So the next step, you just want to fill that up with water. So I'll use my jug that I've got here and just fill it up with water like so and then the idea is that you put the lid back on and then you're going to insert that into the soil of your plant upside down and then slowly over time while you're on holiday it's going to slowly water the plant so we need to submerge that into the soil of your chosen house plant so I think I will demonstrate it with this aglionema I've got here. You want to take your plant, your bottle, make a little hole in the soil and then put it upside down and there you have it. That will slowly empty into the soil of this plant and it will just water the plant as it needs it. It will slowly wick away into the soil. So a really useful tip if you're going away on holiday. Tip number four involves using a turkey baster, a turkey baster that you have in your kitchen. So sometimes when we water our plants, we're a little bit too eager and excess moisture will come out of the drainage holes of the plants. So normally that's not a problem. If the plant's quite small, you can just take it over to the sink and just empty it, empty the saucer over the sink so there's no excess water. 
But if you have a large plant, like I do with my calafeo in my living room, I've got a lemon tree down there as well, and I've got some ficus elastica, it can be quite tricky to lift up the plant and take this plant over there and discard the water. So this next tip is to use a turkey baster. So it's just to, if you have a plant that's based on a floor and it's sat on top of a, a large saucer, and you've watered too much and there's excess water in the saucer. You don't want the plant sitting in there because that will tend to rot the roots of the plant if, if the plant's sitting in water too much. So a good way of emptying the water, instead of taking it over to the sink and making a mess, you can just use a turkey baster and just suck up the water that's in the saucer and then discard it that way. So a really useful tip to help to save the plant from overwatering. Tip number five is to dust the leaves of your house plants regularly. Your plants will accumulate dust just like your shelves in your house. So it's important that we keep our plants dust free by giving them a clean probably once a month or once every two months. So your plant relies on sunlight to photosynthesize. Therefore, if there's a layer of dust on the plant's leaves, and that's gonna impact the plant's ability to store energy and push out strong new growth. So it's a good idea just to go through your house plants, probably when you're watering them or fertilizing them, just to check the leaves for dust. And if there's a, a layer of dust on there because you're not cleaning them in a while, then just go through with a damp cloth and give them a wipe. Your plants will respond by looking obviously much cleaner, much healthier. Also, it's a good pest prevention measure because if you're constantly wiping down your plants and looking after them, then it's gonna stop spider mites from multiplying on your plants because you're wiping them away regularly. Houseplant hack number six is to rotate your houseplants regularly. Rotating your houseplants regularly means that the plant receives an equal amount of sunlight on each area of the, each side of the plant. Therefore, the growth of the plant isn't gonna be lopsided to one side. So you'll notice with a couple of plants that respond very well to light, such as this Diffenbachia here, at the moment, this is kind of facing in one direction. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. It's kind of facing that way at the moment towards the camera. That's because I've had it facing that way on my windowsill, my east facing windowsill. So it's tending to kind of push growth that side. So you just need to turn it that way and then it will start to turn around and push out growth the other way. So if you keep doing that, and you'll ensure that your plant has a nice even growth. So I like to turn my plants probably 90 degrees, probably once a week, and that really makes sure that they get a nice even growth. Houseplant hack number seven involves this. This is a two liter bottle of pop. So this will be used to create a dome for a houseplant. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut off the top of this bottle and then we can use it to place over a house plant of your choice, one that likes a lot of humidity. Maybe you have a plant that is a bit small, struggling a little bit. You just wanna boost its health, get it through um, the drier months maybe. So you just wanna place that over the top of the plant. So I'll do a demonstration of cutting this in half. So you just wanna grab some scissors and then carefully make a hole and then just cut around relatively evenly. So that is your, that's the general idea. So I've got a little uh, satin pothos here. I bought this recently, online plant shopping video and unboxing. This is one of the plants I bought. I'll link to that in the description. So it's a little baby plant. So I just wanna kind of nurse this plant through a little bit. Just give it some extra humidity, which is what this plant likes. I'll put this on here just to show you, but that's essentially it. The humidity in here will increase because it's a closed environment. You'll start to see some condensation within a, a few hours probably. And that means that this is working. And hopefully you should see some strong growth on the plant that you've chosen to do this with. Houseplant hack number eight has been a real lifesaver for me and it involves using Google Lens to help identify the houseplants you have in your house. If you have a lot of houseplants in your house, like I do, I think I've got about 200 houseplants, then it can be tricky to keep track of all those houseplants' names, what they're called. So there's a few paid options out there, but an app I like to use is Google, Google Photos. So I downloaded that app onto my iPhone and then there's a Google Lens section on there just at the bottom, the kind of square looking box next to 
the trash icon, I believe. So if you, what you need to do is you need to take a photo of your plant, open up the Google Photos app, find the photo, click into it, click on the Google Lens icon, and then that will activate a search on that photo. So you'll see lots of little white dots going around. And then in a couple of seconds, it will come back with some search results on what that plant is. So then you know straight away what the plant is. It will show you some pictures, some stock photos of what it is. So you can properly identify which plant it is. It will give you a few options. So you've got a choice and then you can go from there. You can give the right care to that plant because you've been able to search for it successfully. House plant number nine is to use the chopsticks from your takeaway. You might get a Chinese takeaway every now and then and you, they might be giving you some chopsticks. It'd be good to put those to good use. So what I sometimes do is to use those as a stake into your plant's soil. For those plants that are leaning over, it can be quite useful to help them to grow upright. So I've got this plant here. This is a Monstera adansoni. And as you can see, it's got one stem and it's growing in that direction. It's growing wonky. So this needs a little bit of support. So I'm gonna do that now. I've only got a kind of fancy plastic chopstick, but just pretend that this is a, uh, a kind of disposable chopstick that you might get from your takeaway, Chinese takeaway or whatever. So what you can do, you can stick your chopstick into the soil next to the stem of the plant. Grab a little bit of twine, or you can use some tape suitable for plants. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that. And then we can tie the main stem of the plant around the chopstick. And there you have it. I'll probably just go through and just trim the excess like so. And that will encourage that plant to grow straight, like so. Hope you found these nine hacks useful, guys. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna use these houseplant hacks. Let me know how you got on. Also, let me know of any of your own houseplant hacks. I'll be interested to know those. I'm always on the lookout for hacks to help me look after my plants. So like I say, if you like the video, then do give it a thumbs up, helps the channel grow. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. For your next video, then why not check out that one there? And I will see you there. Thank you very much for watching.